Take a look at that. That was the moment a Ukrainian cruise missile struck the headquarters of Russia's Black Sea Fleet in Crimea. Ukraine says the attack left dozens dead and wounded, including senior Russian naval officers. Joining us now to discuss is CNN military analyst and retired U.S. Air Force Colonel Cedric Layton. Uh, Colonel Layton, uh, that's some uh, pretty impressive firepower uh, that the Ukrainians just unleashed on the Russians there. Help us understand the uh, significance of this strike. Sure is, Jim. One of the key things to think about here is exactly what happened. You look at this roof, and it's it's basically destroyed right here with this impact from the missile. And you know, when you look at the other things that happened on the street here in Sevastopol, there's a lot of collateral damage that's associated with this missile strike. So what the Ukrainians did was really impressive from a tactical standpoint and also from a strategic standpoint, because this right here is the headquarters of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, and that that, of course, is one of the main areas where they're actually looking at all the different uh, command and control aspects that the Russians are, are uh, running out of this building. And so this one of the one of the key things that you have here is, you know, when you're looking at Crimea, Sevastopol is right about here, and you've got them running all of this right, uh, you know, all of the Black Sea operations right here. You also have them controlling what's going on on the southern front. And so when they're doing this, uh, they're also looking at controlling what's going on in Odessa, and that is, of course, important because this is where Ukraine is actually shipping its grain out of. So anything that the Ukrainians can do to attack this particular target, that is what is critical for the Ukrainians from their war effort. Right, and Ukraine may soon be getting these long-range missiles known as attackums. Uh, what impact does an attack like this have on their argument for more systems like this? Because, I mean, this is the kind of, uh, I guess, uh, punishment they want to inflict on the Russians. Well, it, it certainly is. So attackum systems like the one that uh, is being used right here, and when you see this, uh, this is the attackums in flight. What this particular missile can do is, of course, go over a whole area that uh, is about 190 miles or so. So if you launch it from about here, it could cover this area right in, in here. What the Ukrainians did when they launched this attack, they came in and they used probably what amounts to a home grown missile or one of these missiles, and this is the Storm Shadow missile, mm. which is on the Su-24 fighter jet that the Ukrainians have. So when they did this, they were able to use this kind of equipment and do it in a way that actually was, uh, you, you know, I think partly a, a more important way of, of handling this, but it was also a, a system that where they're improvising, using some Western things, uh, some Western weapon systems to do this, but the other things that they can do here is they can actually uh, actually use this in a way that they have the range for the storm shadow is going to be up to 250 miles, depending on the variant. It's an air launch system, like I mentioned, with the Su-24, and it can hit hardened targets. Now, if they bring the ATACMs into this, the range is about 190 miles. It is a ground launch system. It originally was used to handle infantry and softer targets, but it can also handle some of the more hardened targets, such as armor. So this is a critical thing. There's one capability with the Storm Shadow. There's another capability with the ATACMs, and they are complementary to each other. Yeah, their capabilities are certainly getting upgraded. Um, and, and one Ukrainian official warned that the Black Sea Fleet could be, quote, sliced up like a salami in uh, potential future strikes. Um, how do you think Ukraine could pull that off? Can they pull that off? Well, I think one of the key things is that when the Ukrainians are doing this, they are actually using something that is part of the intelligence process. They're going through and they're taking a look and seeing where each one of these ships is, for example. And if they target each each one of these ships, what they're doing, Jim, is they're making sure that the Russian capability to control the Black Sea, all of this water right here, is limited so they can actually do this. And it is possible that they could actually slice and dice the Black Sea fleet if they wanted to. All right. We'll be watching for that. We know you will as well, Colonel Cedric Layton. Always appreciate your expertise and insights. Thanks for coming in on this rainy uh, Saturday evening. Really appreciate it. You bet.